AI now supports tools, which makes it easy to integrate external data into your AI application and to give your AI new ways to display data to your customers. Let me show you how to give your AI both of those types of tools right now. So this is the application that we're gonna build. It's an AI chatbot that helps folks find the right adoptable pet for them. Let's say that we are the Oregon Humane Society and we've got a bunch of adoptable pets and we want to make it easy for folks to have a conversation with us about what the kind of pet that they want to adopt and whether we have any of those in our shelter. So let's ask it for a small dog. And it's currently giving us back a very generic chat GPT answer because it doesn't have access to our data. The AI doesn't know what's in our shelter. So we're going to use a tool to give it access to that data. So here's the current implementation as it stands. And it's really simple. We've got the home page here. It brings in the use chat hook from the Versal AI libraries react section. And then we use that use chat hook to communicate with our slash API slash chat API. What it gives us back is a current list of all the messages in our conversation, as well as three things to do with our input. So the input value of the text field, the handle input change, that's the on change handler for the input, as well as handle submit, that's what you put on the form. So when you hit enter, we send it to API chat, and then is loading, which tells us if we're currently processing a request. And then down in the JSX, we format the messages that we've sent to and gotten from the AI and then finally, we have our input inside of a form that that form has an on submit that does the handle submit that sends off to slash API slash chat. And then it's got that input control from Shad CN. We're just giving it the value and the handle input change. and It's doing all the work for us. So over in slash API slash chat, we have a post request handler. So we get the post, then we pull the messages out of it. Then we use stream text to initiate another request to, in this case, GPT 4.0 from OpenAI. Now lots of different AIs support tooling. I'm just choosing this one because it's the most convenient for me. Then we give the system its context. So in this case, we say that it's meant to answer questions about adoptable pets. We give it the list of messages and then we get back the stream and that's it. That's really all you need to connect your app to ChatGPT generically. But of course, we want to give it all the information we have about our pets. So we want to give it a tool. So we bring in tool from AI and then we define a set of tools. And in there, we'll define a get pets tool. So get pets is a function that we're going to give to the AI and we tell it then what it's meant to be. That's why we're giving the AI a description of the function. That's telling the AI basically when it should call that function. Now, because the function, it takes parameters. So let's define those parameters using Zod. So we'll bring in Zod and then down in our get pets. We'll define the parameters. The parameters have to be an object. And then within that, we'll define some keys. Keys will be the type of the animal you want. So in this case, a cat or a dog. And then the size. Do you want a small or medium or a large size cat or dog? Now let's go get our list of pets. So we'll bring in pets. Let's go take a look at what the pets look like. So in this pets.ts file that has all the data that I mined out of the Oregon Humane Society, we've got the ID of the pet, the name, age, and so on. So we've got this whole list of pets that we now brought into our route. I'm also going to define what the size thresholds are for both cats and dogs. So in this case, a small cat is less than five pounds and a small dog is less than 25 pounds. And now we want to provide an implementation for get pets. So we add an execute function. So those functions are async. So you can go off and make a request to some API if you want. In this case, we're not just going to do that. We're just going to go and take that array that we've already got and just filter it down based on the type and the weight coming in to this function. Now, in order to see that, let's go and change the implementation of page so it shows us any tool invocations. To do that, we're going to look at messages again. Now we've changed out our message formatting so that instead of just using a markdown to show the content, we're looking to see if we have a tool invocations key on the message. And if we do, then we're just going to stringify whatever that is so we can see what's coming in and out of our tool invocations. All right, let's go take a look. Again, I'd like a small dog. And we can see that the AI in response to that question has now chosen to invoke get pets. Pretty awesome. Now I can ask a follow-up question and say, cool, can you recommend one? And with that, it's going to take a look at the contextual data that it just got and return Coco in this case. And that's a great recommendation. But wouldn't it be great if we could do that without being prompted? Like the first thing it would do is ask us to get the pets and then it would just give us a recommendation based on those get pets. Well, the secret sauce there is to allow it to take extra steps as it processes the request. 
So let's go back into our route and we'll specify that we have a max steps of four. That allows the AI to do it up to four things in response to our question. Now you can make that number as high as you want. Four in this case is way more than enough. It would really just do two things, get pets and then respond. So let's try it out. We'll start again from the beginning. I'd like a small dog. Now it's made the call and it's making a recommendation based on that call. Awesome. So now you see how easy it is to add a tool to your AI so that it can extend the context of that AI. And it can do more than just query. It could actually be a mutation as well. So it's like you have a to-do system and you want to be able to add to do. So you can certainly do that with these tools. So it's not just queries, it can be mutations as well. Now, before we get in the next section about how to use tools in your UI and give your AI new ways to communicate with your customer, let me talk to you about pronextjs.dev. That's my new course on all things Next.js. We'll take you through the basics all the way into advanced use cases just like this. So if you're enjoying this content, you will really love pronextjs.dev. Go check it out. All right, now let's go give the AI a tool to allow it to show the pet recommendation in a more elegant way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give it a new tool. So we're gonna give the AI a new tool called Show Pets, and we're gonna tell it that it should use it to show the recommended pets after it's gotten the data from Get Pets and then decided which pets are the right ones for us. And it should give us an array of pets, and those would include the pet ID as well as the recommendation. Why do you think this particular pet is the one for us? But what we're not gonna do is give it an execute function because we're gonna execute the UI on the client. So go back over to page, and then over in use chat, we're gonna specify a new option called on tool call. And this gets called whenever a tool invocation happens. And we're gonna tell the LLM handler in this case is that if we get a tool call to a tool named show pets, we're just gonna say we did that. That's, that's handled by the client, you don't need to worry about that. So that's basically the way that we can avoid doing the execute actually in the server response. Then down in the JSX, when we look at those tool invocations, we'll go and see, well, was the tool that's getting called show pets? And if it's in result, meaning that it's completed its work, then we'll look at the arguments to that function, which would be the array of pets, and we'll then format them. This time I'm going to ask it for a little bit different. I'm going to ask it for a medium-sized dog, and we get some very adorable dogs, but formatted using our pet cards. So that's the way that you use tools for UI. And you can imagine giving your AI all kinds of tools to show your data in different ways. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this very quick look at how to use tools with your AI. Of course, all of this code is available to you on GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section. I would love to hear about what you're doing with AI and in particular tools like this. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.